So the global code is important because what we are doing is addressing the uh, deficit of trust that has uh, been present in the FX industry, both within the industry and with the, between the industry and the public, uh, as a result of various events which have happened over the last few years. And so there's a need to move the market to a better place. The global code sets out a common uh, set of principles around good practice, which allows or help, will help facilitate move, moving the market to that better place and address that deficit of trust that there are that there is in the industry. The code has a couple of important angles. One, it is global, and secondly, it applies across the market. So it applies across the market in the dimension of being right around the globe. It also applies right across the wholesale market in terms of all of the participants in the market. The way in which it applies depends on what exactly you are in the market and we've made uh, it very clear that the code is proportionate to the nature of your engagement with the market. But the important point is the, go the code is global and it is applicable right across the wholesale FX market. How has it been rolled out in my region? I'll talk about the Asian region, so and particularly, obviously, my own region of Australia. Uh, in Australia, the Australian Foreign Exchange Committee uh, has endorsed the code. We have an expectation, we have a requirement, actually, that all of our uh, members of the committee uh, sign a statement of commitment and adhere to the code. More broadly, across the Australian foreign exchange market, we are engaging with the various uh, associations there. The Australian Financial Markets Association has released a statement today supportive of the code and will uh, uh, be applying it to, uh, uh, promoting it to its members. Previously in Australia, we have followed the ACI code and uh, as ACI has made clear, it is adopting the global code wholesale, so we have a lot of ACI members in Australia, so through that it has been rolled out to them. And then we've also engaged with another number of other industry associations, by, uh, including the corporate treasurers to address the corporate sector, uh, but also uh, the super superannuation asset management sector uh, in Australia. So making it clear to them what is involved, how it applies to them. Uh, across the Asian region more generally, um, there are a number of different angles. One, we actually have a number of Asian uh, foreign exchange committees on the newly constituted Global Foreign Exchange Committee, and they're in addition to what have been there previously. So originally in, in our part of the world, we had Singapore, Hong Kong, and Japan, along with ourselves from the Asian region. That has now been extended to include China uh, and Korea. Uh, so they, that is new. Moreover, in the Asian region more generally, uh, I've been uh, making it, uh, promoting it to the other uh, jurisdictions such as Indonesia and Malaysia. Indonesia and Malaysia both use the ACI, so that uh, ACI code, so it naturally rolls out to them as well. Uh, so we were commissioned to address this deficit of trust uh, two a bit over two years ago now. Um, the re how we got to putting the code together was uh, it involved the 15 or 16 central banks from the major foreign exchange centres, so all the way from one down to 16, uh, have been involved in the process. And then we have also worked together with the private sector through the market participants group, which is broad both in coverage across the industry and also across the globe. And I think one important, very important aspect of all of this is it's a public-private uh, exercise. Um, the code is voluntary in nature, so it's not regulation, but it is very much a joint public sector, private sector initiative and has involved tremendous input from the private sector group led by David Puth, uh, along with the input from the central banking side. So it is very much a collective effort and reflects the collective judgment of both the public and the private sector as to what constitutes good practice in the market.